Well, hello everyone and welcome to another Yorkshire Gamer book review. And today I'm going to be having a look at Leipzig, The Battle of the Nations. And that's a Wargamer's Guide to the Battle of Leipzig 1813. Uh, author is Rohan Saravanamu 2 and it is number 8 in the Helians Wargames group um, of books. Now, um, little just disclaimer or little information at the start of the program or start of the episode um, i've purchased this with my own money i bought it from uh, hellion at partisan um, i have interviewed the author rohan and he will be on the next podcast that i do um, i am an experienced napoleonic war gamer and i have played leipzig through a number of times so uh, this is something a subject i know about and uh, Let's have a look through the book and see what you get for your money. Um, I paid £20 for this cash. You can see the uh, the notation there. I think it's, it might be £25 on the, on the website. And we've got a list of contents at the front. Uh, quite basic, but it gives you a list of maps, etc. And uh, basic introduction. And then we're on to the historical background. Now there is quite a lot of information here. And uh, going into the qualities of the armies, there's a lot of in-depth stuff there and discussion about troop types, troop classifications and the reasons why things are classified the way that they are later on in the rules. Throughout the book um, there are some of these pencil original pencil uh, sketches uh, which are a nice little touch and always nice to have a little bit of original artwork instead of uh, churning through the old uh, paintings that we tend to see in all uh, napoleonic books and uh, as you can see there there's quite a few of them uh, accompanied in here are some uh, lots of photographs of games in progress and we'll talk about that in a little bit um, maps Fairly basic, uh, but this is just giving you an overview of the area in which the battles took place. Much wider uh, scope of map there with Leipzig itself in the centre and a general area map around it. Just to give you some orientation when you are looking at the, uh, the battles that are included. So we then move on to a history. Now, um, I... Uh, have a copy of Nafzinger's Napoleon at Leipzig, uh, which is a great book, very, very detailed. And in the podcast that's just about to come up, I do speak at length with Rohan about how he chose how much depth to put in to this um, history of the battle and the build up to it. Um, so it's an interesting discussion. Do you put loads in? Do you put a tiny amount in, expecting people to read up around it? difficult one always a difficult one and i think um, the author here has probably got it about right we don't have that much information or we don't tend to read that much information in english about leipzig waterloo going to waterstones 10 books leipzig not so many so um this is useful for people who, it's a one-stop shop for the book so we then move on to the battle of leipzig itself and uh, we've got discussions about what happened, detailed descriptions of the battle in all the different sectors, uh, accompanied by these uh, line drawings and pictures of war games in action. And then we've got the map that we had earlier on, but this time we have got superimposed that the army groups that are um, fighting the battle. And this gives you a really good idea of the size and complexity of the Battle of Leipzig. Bit of a lull on the 17th of October and then further fighting on the 18th. And that's all nicely detailed and described within these uh, pages here. And uh, we've got the Battle of Leipzig, 19th of October and a uh, nice little uh, original illustration again there and for the result just to give you an idea this is just casualties 40,000 French killed and wounded 56,000 uh, allies killed and wounded so uh, this is a big battle if you didn't know already and uh, a little bit of an analysis of the battle itself 
with uh, more pictures and then we are on to wargaming the battle so if we look in the back we have got 131 pages of which the first 60 are a background to the battle and uh, with a battle of this complexity this many pe people involved this much complexity from a political point of view in the background i haven't got a problem with that that's quite a decent introduction so we're talking about wargaming the the battle and i'm just going to talk about photographs here at this particular point now there's a discussion I've had before uh, on the podcast about photographs in books and there's two schools of thought. There's a school of thought which um, has the best figures on the best possible terrain all suited and booted and not necessarily playing a game but set up for a photograph and that projects the, in inverted commas, pinnacle of the hobby. And there are other, there's another way to look at it, to put photographs in that reflect more what a wargamer, I'm not going to say average, but what a wargamer would do. Now, this photograph would be, as I would say, typical of that. This is a game in progress. These are wargame standard painted figures. Are they having as much fun as I would with um, super painted figures? Yeah, of course they are. So... I don't mind it. I quite like it. It's it's realistic. It gives, um, you know, it's not putting people off by having everything ultimate standard. There's a mix of quality of um, painting and figures within this book. And I think that's a positive thing. So enough of that. Um, we'll talk about uh, the terrain and uh, some detailed uh, description of the terrain. And it then moves on to these pages, and these pages have um, three maps, and they're all gridded, make it a lot easier for you to set up, and they come into use uh, later on in the scenarios. So we've got an introduction to the scenarios themselves. Everything is set up for in the grand manner, although there's a, uh, a section later on where Rohan talks about uh, changing it for different rule sets and if you've come to this expecting a six by four game of sharp practice you're going to be very very disappointed leipzig is the biggest battle in the napoleonic wars it is huge we're going to look at some of the battalion numbers later on in this but it's not for the faint of heart doing this this is a these are big battles on big tables and you know me, that's the sort of stuff I love. Um, some, some ideas for running the um, scenarios as a campaign, which is great. Uh, and then we move on to the scenarios themselves. And each scenario has, is set up in the same way. And the first one just happens to be my favourite ever Napoleonic uh, battle, which is Lieber Voltovix. And that's the Yorkshire pronunciation. Uh, got no idea how it should be pronounced, but there we go. And each of the scenarios has a brief introduction, a briefing for one of the players, for the French in this particular one. We have an order of battle, and you would go you go to the orders of battle. We're going to look at it shortly. Get your troops from there. Um, then you get your deployment and potential reinforcements. Exactly the same for the Allied. Briefing, layout, reinforcements, objectives and victory conditions. And each of these scenarios are filled out in a similar way. Some of them are more detailed than others. Some of them have more options than others. Some of them have reinforcements. Some of them don't. Each one is tailored to that particular scenario. Then we come on to look at the French order of battle for the game. And this is for the whole Battle of Leipzig. And each one of the scenarios picks individual divisions and brigades out of this order of battle for you to put on the table. And just to give you an idea, and this is the scaled down version. We'll come to the full order of battle later on. 91 infantry battalions, 94 cavalry squadrons and 14 batteries of guns. 
a few of my regular listeners will have that on the shelves, but not many, not many. So this is this is proper big battle gaming. Um, the then we've got briefings, and we move into the whole battle of Leipzig Allied Order for the game. And again, look at the totals. 153 battalions of infantry, 174 cavalry squadrons, and 20 batteries. So that is a lot of stuff. Um, apologies, I just knocked the camera there. And keep going through, we've got scenario C, and again, we're taking all the um, information from the maps that we've looked at and the, the orders of battle we've looked at. Uh, and there's the author Rohan looking a little bit worried there. Bless him, uh, some, some big attack coming towards him. Uh, scenario D, Wachau. Scenario E, Lindenau. Scenario F, Leipzig on the 19th of October. So we've got rearguard of battle for that one, which is 27 battalions and 5 cavalry squadrons. Um, so each scenario, and um, I think we go up to F, so that'll be uh, A, B, C, D, E, 6. Six scenarios. Should do it in numbers, shouldn't they, for us um, slower types. Uh, and then we actually have the full order of battle at the end, if you're interested in doing that. And if we just look at them, they are set out for um, in the Grand Manor. So three 48-figure first-class units, three 48-figure second-class unit, one 48-figure Grenz, one 32-figure first-class Jaeger. These are all terms that will be familiar for uh, in the Grand Manor's players and to be fair they're quite universal uh, ways of classifying troops within the Napoleonic period so it should and in fact it, it would transfer across to any or other major set of rules um, so that's the scenario uh, scenario G is a, uh, a what if and go back to the various um, orders of battle we've looked at there. Uh, design notes, lots of detail here on a little bit of extra flavour into stuff. Um, order of battles for other rules and then special rules for the British Rocket Troop. We did send something uh, and there's a couple of our officers there as well. So lots of optional rules there. Nice picture of a light uh, Bavarian infantry officer there. And then we move on to the historical orders of battle. And these very much are not for the faint-hearted. This is if you wanted to do the whole of the battle. And um, there's a lot. So there were 205,075 French infantry, which is 351 battalions, 355 squadrons of cavalry, and 775 guns. That's a lot. Uh, you think that's a lot? Wait till you get on to the Allied history, history, bleh, Historical Order of Battle. And including there is a Swedish corpse. So you, that um, that strange friend of yours who bought Swedish figures all those years ago, uh, give him a ring because <laughs> they need to come along and play in the game because you're not going to get Swedish from anywhere else. And uh, where are we? The final total is 357, 357,119 for the Allied armies, 462 battalions, 674 squadrons, 1,430 guns. Just go and get them off your shelves in your war games room. We've all got them. <laughs> so from that, you can see this is a big project. This is likely to be done by a group of players or um, somebody with a huge humongous um, army or it could be done on a smaller scale I've seen people who uh, well Robbie Roddis who was on my podcast he built up all the forces in six mil so you know it could be done in smaller scales this isn't a, um, a book that is scale specific it's not rule specific if you've got battalions on those little 60 by 30 mil squares that uh, six mil uh, are on there's no reason you can't use this book for setting your scenarios up you just need to rescale the maps as simple as that uh, so there we go uh, that is the book a couple of appendices and some end notes and further reading at the back which is great so 
what am I going to say? I'm going to say very positive. It's not for small games. These are big, big battles. But if you, you ever fancied pushing yourself, uh, then this is the book to do. You know, I would look at those army you bat lists when I first started gaming at 16 and 18, like I um, used to with the Battle of Waterloo list. And I would see it as a challenge to get all the units to fill that list rather than being too much. So... This is for an ambitious wargamer. This is for a wargamer who wants to inspire to do the biggest battle in the Napoleonic Wars. Not as a set of skirmishes, but as a set of smaller, really big battles. So I hope that's given you a good idea. Um, if you're interested, then you can buy it direct from Helium. Um, it, or um, I would imagine somebody like uh, Dave Ryan at Caliver will have copies as well. Uh, but I recommend this book if you're a Napoleonic gamer and you want to have a crack at the biggest battle going. Hope you've enjoyed that and uh, we'll see you next time on Yorkshire Gamer. Sidi!